growing pains. So, I, so when I first got diagnosed, I was 16, going on to 17. I was pretty much at the peak of, peak of my like, not peak of my high school life, but like getting to the peak and like just enjoying myself, finding like finding out about like girls pretty much for the first time, like alcohol and all that stuff. The you see me that I got diagnosed with lymphoma, my immediate reaction was like, oh my god, like how can this actually be happening to me? Like out of everyone that I know, like I've got mates that are in, like they do drugs and all that. I'm like, how can this actually be me? Why would God be doing this stuff to me? And yeah, so I just, after that, after I figured it out, I'm like, well, it's not going to go away with me complaining. I just got to battle through it. Considering that less than 1% of cancer's patients are between the ages of 15 and 24, it is no surprise that young people consider themselves amongst cancer's hidden generation. So how do young people cope? And more importantly, how can we better understand their struggle? No matter what age, we all need guidance. We were fortunate enough to speak to two young men who could provide us with some of these answers. Honestly, I was scared, like, will I ever see my family again? Will I ever go out with my mates again? Will I be old enough to go to a club with my mates, with my brother? Um, like, I was asking myself the question, why is this happening to me? Like, what did I ever do so wrong to deserve this? Mm. Yeah, I, like, I know because my dad owns two fish shops, like, if I, like, I was going to go into chemotherapy, but because my, and my dad was getting very worried and he wanted to sell both the shops to, like, keep, like, have sufficient funds and, like, to not have that, the shop as a word in his mind and me being his first priority. But that really affect, like, that really got to me as, like, I, I'm not the person that wants to be on everyone's attention. Like, I sort of just wanted them to go on with everyday life and I knew that was hard for them as they would worry about me. I've heard heaps of people that after cancer they just get more conserved and like they don't do much. But I've said to myself like, you've, you've already had it. So um, just go live your life to the absolute fullest. And that's what I do now. Like I do, like I'm always out with the boys, just having a blast, kicking back, like just being myself, not giving much of a worry about anything. And like, like I've, it, it comes like, it just helps me get everything off my mind and I really enjoy doing that. One of the things we find that young people really can struggle with uh, when diagnosed with cancer is the, the sense of isolation that it can bring. A lot of them have told us over the years how um, it's really hard to explain exactly what they're going through, what exactly it means, and often as a result of things such as uh, treatments, chemo, and so forth, they end up missing out a lot on what's happening around them and that can really separate them from their friends. It was, uh, it was a tumour, it was a pituitary gland tumour um, where it, uh, it was right behind my nose um, and can getting consistent headaches uh, years after years after years, doctors would find nothing um, until I signed a professional contract. Then they uh, told me I had a pituitary gland tumour at the back of my nose which forced me to stop playing professional football. Uh, I, was, I was 18 at the time, I was playing in Spain for a club called Espanyol. Um, literally two weeks before I got diagnosed I signed a professional contract. Um, it, was a, it was a three year contract where, where my parents came to say goodbye because I wasn't going to see them for three years and then Next second, I was diagnosed and back in Australia with, with my contract being torn up. It was a lot of, a lot of tears, a lot of fear, feeling sorry for myself. Um, being in a professional environment, it's, it's hard enough trying to make it. Um, when you can't make it because of your own self, because of your own health, it was really a, a kick in the guts. 
Um, once I couldn't play anymore, I, I didn't want to leave the game completely. I fell into coaching and, and from there it became a full-time job now. Oh, it's the most uh, rewarding job in the world. It's, it could be the most frustrating job as well, but once they do hit their goals, it is the most rewarding job in the world. And they don't have to be the best player. Just from improving from A to B um, really makes my day. Finding your feet at any time of your year can be difficult. Add cancer to the equation and you can easily feel like you're sinking. These two young men have shown us that there is always a way to stay afloat. That's a wrap.